All right. Um, I would like to like you guys to now welcome two people uh, who are, uh, God, I'm sorry. I should not have done that with my head. Um, <laughs> so Ooh. Uh, these two people uh, that I'm bringing up next to present, uh, uh, Shantae Lewis and Judy Carter. Shantae Lewis has done more to promote diversity, outreach, helping children than I could ever, ever uh, recount here. She is amazing. And uh, Judy Carter, as you know, is known as the goddess of comedy, a title she shares with Andy Dick. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please put your hands together for Shantae Lewis and Judy Carter. to do a Cirque du Soleil entrance, but um, we're wearing Spanx. Um, anyway, um, I'm Judy Carter, and I want you to meet my mentor, Shantae Lewis. Um, yeah, I got that right. Um, I was supposed to mentor her, and I was supposed to uh, teach her a lot of stuff. But it ends up that I was the one who truly learned from her. She even picked out my dress. Um, Trust me, she needed help. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the Fulfillment Fund wanted us to share our story with all of you. And it started 14 years ago, and I volunteered to be a mentor. And then they called me up, and they said, oh my god, we have the perfect girl for you. You've got to meet Shantae Lewis. And at the time, I had lost a lot of family members, and I guess um, I was looking for more family. And yeah, and I actually had a really huge family, and I definitely wasn't looking for more. Yeah. <laughs> but when the Fulfillment Fund called me, they told me that as part of the program, you get scholarships, and you get to go to really cool places. So I was thinking, maybe she has Lakers tickets. <laughs> But you know, I met Judy and she was this awesome person and she actually had a two-door convertible. So there we were, the two of us, rolling down Crenshaw with the music cranked up really loud, listening to the sound of music. <laughs> I was open, sorta. Of. Sorta. Of. I just was so happy to be with her and she was so appreciative. And I just wanted to, I really wanted to expose you to everything. Yes, and I was 14 at the time, so that exposure quickly turned into shock therapy. <laughs> like the first time, actually, you know, I had dinner at Judy's house, and she brings out this bowl of soup, and it has this round sponge in it. It's matzo ball soup. <laughs> yeah, and 14 years later, I'm still full from it. <laughs> I changed the recipe. I added seltzer. It's better. Yeah. Uh, those were the good times. Yeah. And then things kind of got complicated. complicated. <laughs> um, our relationship got a little difficult. I think it was when I invited Shantae over for dinner. It was our first dinner together. And in the middle of it, she just screams and runs out of the house. Well, Judy's cat jumped on the table in the middle of dinner. Where I was from, we didn't have cats as pets. So I was like, this is really scary. <laughs> And so next time she came over, I invited her, you know, bring your cousin. And I was going to introduce her to some of my friends. And I was really careful. I locked the cat up. But apparently there was something scarier for her. Gay people. OK, so imagine this. Picture this. Cats and gay people all at one table. You know, so here I am coming from South Central. Judy was definitely the first white person I met. Certainly the first Jewish person I met. So now we're having dinner with gay people. So, you know, my cousin actually went home and told her family, and they really overreacted, and they wanted to pull me out of the program. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I just kind of found myself torn between my mentor and my family, and I just kind of wanted to walk away from it all, and just, I shut down. I know, and I just said, no. I mean, let's, let's just do it. Can't we just talk about it? And remember, I'm 14. At 14, you don't talk about it. We, the way that I dealt with conflict was just to kind of leave it by, by itself and hope that it just kind of goes away. Yeah, but you know, then what happened when we got together, uh, Shante just fell asleep whenever I showed up. It was like I was her human ambient. I, she would just, I would call and you would be in the car with me. I'd go, so how was school? What's going on? Nothing. 
Yeah, but you know, it truly wasn't about Judy. At the time, it was um, seven of us living in a two-bedroom apartment, and I was sleeping in the living room, so that's why I was sleeping all the time when I was with her. And I just kind of felt like really overwhelmed um, by the process. Yeah, but then the Fulfillment Fund intervened, and they were so fantastic. They sent over a Fulfillment Fund counselor to mediate, and they had us talk it out. Yeah, and to my surprise, we actually worked it out. You know, we were able to build back trust, and I'm a therapist now, and I think back to that, and I was like, maybe that's the actual reason why I became a therapist, to help other young people talk it out. But, you know, you wouldn't have been become a therapist because what happened was in 11th grade we took Shantae to meet with Sherry Banks who's the Fulfillment Fund college counselor and Sherry just looked at your transit yes she deserves a hand she is awesome she does. <laughs> if it wasn't for Sherry I truly don't think you would have gotten college and have the life you have because we found out Shantae wasn't taking college courses in high school. Yeah, Sherry just looks at my transcripts and she just shrieks. Yeah, louder than the cat. She just screams, carpentry, you know, what are you doing taking carpentry when you have above a 3.5 GPA? Okay, get this, Shantae's high school counselor took her out of a college uh, classes and put her in vocational training and she actually had the audacity to say to me do you think Shantae a girl like her belongs in a university she should just get a job and I'm thinking people like her don't belong being a high school counselor <laughs> yes. and I'll never forget that day because Shantae was sitting outside in the fulfillment fun steps and she was crying, and she was just going, I'm never getting to college now. And I said, no, we, we're going to do something. We're going to do something about this. Oh, no. and Judy did something. Well, yeah. She, I, she marched right down to Venice High School and actually got in my counselor's face. Yeah, and I said to her, in spite of you, Shantae's going to take those like geometry classes and chemistry, and she's going to get in a university. And, you know, truly, that was the first time that I actually had someone stand up for me. I had someone in my corner, and it was nice to have someone actually believe in me and give me the confidence that I needed. And I felt like, wow, I can actually do this. I can go to college. Yeah, but it was you who went to summer school, you took the classes, and you did what you had to do. I did. And then all the while, I was like, how am I going to be able to pay for this? You know, but Sherry at the Fulfillment Fund, she told me, you know, Shante, you just good, good grades, and we'll worry about paying for it later. Right. And she didn't get good grades. She got great grades. She, you were awesome. And she got... <laughs> this for you. <laughs> if I were a little bit lighter, you all would be making me blush right now. <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> she got into UC Santa Cruz. I did, and you know, with the help, thank you. <laughs> with the, yes, go slugs. <laughs> and you know, with the help of the Fulfillment Fund and Santa Cruz, I was actually able to pay for it all. Yeah, and not only that, she's the kind of girl who knows how to fill in all those forms. And she applied to the student abroad program, and she goes, yeah, guess what? I'm going to Brazil. Next thing you know, she's speaking Portuguese. E aí, cara. <laughs> she, she's going to Ghana. She went to Africa. She went to France. A long way from Crenshaw Boulevard. <laughs> yes, indeed. And then she graduated from Santa Cruz, then she applied to grad school, and she got in the master's program at Johns Friggin Hopkins. <laughs> and we actually, Judy and I drove all the way from South Central to Baltimore. We went on a road a, trip. <laughs> yeah, a long road trip, and I even picked up some Yiddish along the way. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, we stopped in Ohio, and I got to tell you, those friends of Judy, oy vey, they're mashugana. <laughs> and you know, but I actually had a meltdown when I got to Baltimore, because I don't know if you all know Baltimore, but it looks a lot like South Central. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes there for two years. She graduates with a 4.0 average. Um, and 
was awesome. There I was at her graduation. I flew back to Baltimore and I got to meet your friends. Most of whom are gay. <laughs> <laughs> she had a cat. <laughs> I love that cat. <laughs> And then at her graduation, Johns Hopkins, her whole family was there, and her aunt came over to me and said, Judy, you're here? I thought your mentoring with Shantae ended in high school. And her mother came over and said the sweetest words to me. She said, um, Judy, you will always be my family. You are my family. And thanks to the Fulfillment Fund, um, I got my goddaughter for life. And Judy, I just want to thank you for welcoming me into your family. And I truly feel like you and your wife, Gina, I feel like I'm a part of your family. So I want to thank you. Show them your ring. And I'm engaged. <laughs> I told her I didn't want to put that in. Um, you know, I just want to thank the Fulfillment Fund um, for all the hand-holding, the scholarships. I visited Santa Cruz for the first time with the Fulfillment Fund. So I just want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to do that. Um, right now, in this economy where so many people are worried about jobs, I don't only have a job, I actually have a career as a therapist. And I have to say that it was a little bit difficult for me to be able to tell my story up here um, because it's kind of bittersweet. You know, I've had all the success that I've had, but my family, um, they're still very much struggling, you know. Um, and I can't help but wonder, what would my, um, like, would my sister be working a minimum wage job at Target, you know, if she had a mentor? Um, my cousin was killed when I was in um, high school, and I just think, you know, would he still be alive if he had chosen college rather than live in a gang neighborhood, you know, if he was part of the Fulfillment Fund? I know that I got lucky, and there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not grateful. Um, I saw the invites and how much everyone paid to be here. Wow. Um, I just want to let you all know that you truly are making a difference. You know, for all those 14-year-olds like me who have, the who have the dream but don't necessarily have the opportunity, you're giving that, them that opportunity. And with that, I say thank you. Thank you. And Shantae, ladies and gentlemen.